Ken, thank you for being on with us and, uh, and taking some time this morning to talk to our guys. Uh, I gotta unmute you. There we go. Whoop. Do it again. There we go. All now right. We go. Hey, Chuck, thank you so much for having me on. Graham, that was a fantastic song, man. I really, really appreciate that. Uh, guys, I just want to let you know, just kind of give you a disclosure. I'm in Southwest Georgia, so I just want to let you know two things will probably happen. You'll, you'll probably hear some four-wheelers in the background. Uh, we come out very, very early and start getting those deer. And then, in addition to that, if you see a big buck run behind me, just excuse me for a little minute while I get my gun and go shoot him and come back. So uh, I, I really am grateful to be on with you guys this morning and uh, to worship with men. There's just something special about worshiping with men and just getting together with men and whatever platform God makes available. And so uh, as Chuck mentioned, I'm here in Albany, Georgia. If you are from this area, it's called Albany, uh, long on the all, short on the Benny. And uh, man, we love it down here. God is doing incredible things through a little town. Um, but, you know, just through this pandemic, God has, God has really taught me personally a lot of things, um, both personally and then also with my family. And uh, one of the things that I have loved and I've always tried to take advantage of worshiping, just like Graham said, worshiping where I stand. And right now we stand in a, in a situation where we're not able to fellowship with a lot of people. We're not able to go to church like we normally have been, but God has given me some intimate time with my kids and with my wife. And I've been able to really, really uh, pour into them and have them pour into me. And one of the scriptures that that took me back to uh, was First Chronicles chapter 28. And so if you have your Bibles, men, turn to First Chronicles chapter 28. Uh, and then also we're going to go into 29. And so if you could take a look at those. In these particular scriptures, this is where David is actually turning over the kingdom to Solomon. And as David turns over the kingdom to Solomon, he realizes that there are some things that I need to speak into my son's life. And these are some things that I need to tell him and make sure he has before I, before I leave this earth. And so I, I start thinking, I said, man, well, how much time do I have left with my children? How much time has God mm -hmm. given me? Um, to, to pour into them and to equip them to be able to handle the things of this world. And then not, not only that, but also the blessings of God. And so if I can, I would like to start reading uh, First Chronicles chapter 28, verses 20, and then I'm going to roll into uh, chapter 29. And this is what it says uh, in verse 20. It says, Then David said to his son Solomon, Be strong and courageous and act. Do not fear or be dismayed, for the Lord God, my God, is with you. He will not fail you nor forsake you until all the work uh, for the service of the house of the Lord is finished. And then he goes on to say, Now behold, there are divisions of priests and the Levites for all the service of the house of the Lord, and for every willing man of any skill will be with you in all the work for any kinds of service. And the officials and also and all the people will be entirely at your command. And then in chapter 29, Verses one and two, he says, then King David said to the entire assembly, my son Solomon, whom alone God has chosen, is still young and inexperienced, and the work is great. For the temple is not for man, but for the Lord. Now, with all my ability, I have provided for the house of my God, the, the gold and for the things of gold and the silver for the things of silver and bronze for the things of bronze, the iron for the things of iron, the wood for the things of wood, onyx stones and inlaid stones, stones of antimony and stones of various colors and all kinds of precious stones and alabaster in abundance. And when I looked at that particular scripture and start reading that, I said, yes. I said, God, this is what I needed for this season. This is showing me that Eve David, even though he's preparing to leave, he's also preparing his children and the things that they need uh, before he leaves this earth to do the things of God. And so the first thing that he did, he understood Solomon's personal struggles. If you can look at verse 20, he knew that this kid was struggling. You see, Solomon was one of the youngest of David's children. And he knew that there were people that were more experienced. He knew that there were people that were more uh, educated in becoming king or, or, or being a king. And so he says, uh, be strong, courageous, and act. Do not fear or be dismayed because the Lord, my God, this is my God. He will be with you. And so for my children, I've got to let them know, uh, you know, the work is going to be hard that God has given you to do. You know, the, the age is going to be different. There are going to be people that are going to be 
that will be fighting against you because of the gospel. But guess what? Be strong and courageous and act. Don't just stand there, but you have to act. And so during this time of Corona, I had to teach my children that. So he understood his personal struggles, but not only that, he understood his professional shortfalls. He knew that Solomon didn't have everything he needed personally to stand up for the kingdom. And so in verse 21 of First Chronicles, he says, now behold, there are divisions of priests and the Levites for the service of the house of God. And every willing man of all skill will be with you in the work of all kinds and the officials also, and all the people will be entirely at your command. And so he knew that he didn't have all the tools. So he put people in his path that could help him to do that. And so men, I wanna ask the question, how many of us are setting up our kids for, for success by putting people in their path that can help them. He put people that were skilled and skilled artisans and all types of things in their path. And so I start thinking, okay, for my daughter, am I putting strong women in her path? Am I putting women in her path that she could pick up the phone and call and say, hey, I'm having problems with this. Can you help me? Am I putting strong men in my son's path that he can pick up the, the phone and if he's having a shortfall or having some issues in his life, he can call them. And so that's exactly what David did. He put strong men around his son so that he can be able to properly rule the kingdom. And then third, he provided, he provided the personal, he understood his personal struggles and he provided uh, people to help with his shortfall. But in addition to that, he provided the resources that Solomon needed to run the kingdom. If you can look at verses one and two, it says it right here. Then King David said to Antiochus, and similarly, my son Solomon, whom alone God has chosen, he said he is chosen, he's the one, is still young and inexperienced, and the work of God is great. And so in, in verse two, David lists all the things that he gives for Solomon. He gives him the resources. And so I need to understand that I need to understand my children's personal struggles. I need to uh, understand their personal shortfalls, but then also provide them the resources that they need to do the work of God. And so as men, that's our responsibility. If, you have, if you're a man and you have young children, invest, be intentional in their, in their raising and how you see them and not just um, bend your mind on giving them things. That's not gonna help them to grow. What's gonna help them to grow is when you biblically invest in your children and you equip them for the work that God has them to do. And when you do that, they'll both remember you as a father and they'll say, you know what, man, um, my life may not have been great, but man, my dad invested in us and he prepared us for the next stage in life. And if you fail in that, guess what, man? There's still forgiveness. There's still forgiveness. If you say, you know what, Ken, uh, man, my, I'm old right now and, and I've blown that area of my life. Guess what? Start investing in your grandkids. Start investing in your nephews and nieces. Make sure you leave a legacy where people will look back and say, you know what? He may not have been good in the beginning, but man, this guy was faithful unto the end. And that's what I want our legacy to be, man, that we are faithful men unto the Lord and we have prepared the next generation to seek and to serve our Savior. God bless you.